All right, here we go. So um, this is the general outline for today's meeting. Um, again, I wanna welcome all of you who are Virio users and friends, and thank you so much for joining us today in this virtual annual meeting of Virio Users Group. My name is Courtney Muma, and I'm the Deputy Director of the Texas Digital Library Consortium, which is, of course, the organizational home for the Virio ETD open source system. We'll follow this agenda today, starting with these introductory remarks and then a few polls to get to know who all is attending today and how you're using Vireo. Then we'll have some updates from the Vireo product manager and a development status update. Then after a short health break, we'll share the new Vireo logo with you and let you know where to grab it for your own local documentation. We'll then discuss work we've done in the past year or so, and we'll finish up with a call for feedback on current work and also some open time for Q&A and discussion. So on this slide and in the chat, um, Megan will share with you a link to our agenda. There's also a shared community notes document, also a link shared in the chat. And I'd like to ask that if you're planning on taking notes today that you do so in that shared notes document in the spirit of sharing and community, it's helpful to everybody. Um, the link, if you miss it here in the chat, is also in the agenda at the top. After the meeting, we will share this video um, and the slides with the entire community. And throughout the meeting today, again, please use the chat to list your questions as you think of them, and we'll make sure to address them either in the moment um, or during the Q&A time we've set aside, depending on how we're doing on time and the flow of things. Um, also use the chat throughout the meeting to add your kind of Vireo wish list items. So even if it's not a question, but there's just something that occurs to you as we're speaking that you'd really like to see in Vireo, please drop it in there, and we'll make sure to talk about them at the end. So I want to begin our introductions with just a few remarks about the Texas Digital Library, which serves as the organizational home for Vireo. So TDL is a library consortium that's based in Texas, but provides services that enable open access, built on a shared open infrastructure, and sustained through a strong, collaborative, and mutually supportive community. Um, we've been working at TDL on Vireo since its beginnings in 2007 as an IMLS-funded project led by the developers at Texas A&M Libraries, one of our founding members. Texas A&M continues to serve a crucial role in contributing development resources to the product project and aided by coding and governance contributions from Texas Tech Libraries, Baylor Libraries, the University of Illinois, UT Southern, Southwest Medical, and other contributors from within the TDL and Vireo open source community of users, we continue to, to develop the software. This year is especially significant for TDL since it's our 20th anniversary, and so we hope that you'll help us celebrate that throughout the year. These are all of our members on this slide, and um, we host of these members, 13 of them, um, we host their Vireo as a service, and they're highlighted in purple. Um, many representatives from those TDL member organizations are with us today, and so I just want to say hello and a special welcome to y'all, and I'm really happy you're here. Thank you. So for TDL and many users outside of TDL, Vireo is just one piece of an ecosystem of software and systems that support open access to scholarship. In addition to providing Vireo as a service, TDL hosts DSpace digital repositories that more often than not serve as the deposit location for theses and dissertations submitted via Vireo or through other workflows. We also host the Texas Data Repository, a Dataverse repository used for publishing research data, as well as nearly 90 open access journals in the Open Journal Systems platform. More recently, we began harvesting from our members' repositories to the Digital Public Library of America through our partnership with our fellow Tex Hub service providers at the University of North Texas. 
Through this ecosystem, TDL is providing free and open access to many hundreds of thousands of items, including theses and dissertations. We see Vireo as a key component of this open uh, research infrastructure, and we're really proud to support it for our members and facilitate its use for this global community of users who deploy and maintain it under the open source license. We believe that community supported and open research infrastructure as opposed to commercial for profit and proprietary is the best path towards sustainable, equitable and ethical open access to scholarship. And we invite you through this meeting to engage with us in supporting it and contributing to its long term sustainability. So speaking of the community, you. Um, let's find out who's with us today. So please go ahead and drop your name and institution into the chat box if you're comfortable and maybe where you're joining from so we can get an idea of who's represented here today. Um, if you feel like it, tell us what the weather's like there. Do you have any pet coworkers with you like I do? My dog Casey is behind me right now on her bed. Um, we'll also run a few polls in a few minutes to get to know this crowd a bit better. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, while you're adding your intro into the chat too, I'm going to introduce your hosts from the Texas Digital Library and the Vireo User Group Steering Committee. So, uh, could our TDL representatives um, show yourselves and give a wave when I mention your names? First off, Frank Smutniak, TDL's lead Vireo developer, is with us today. There's Frank. Christopher Starcher, who joined us in the last year as Vireo's, Vireo's product manager. Hello, Christopher. He'll be talking with you a lot today. And of course, I'm Courtney Mumon, the deputy director, and I'm also the Vireo service manager. Um, I know we have other TDL staff present today, and we'll have another at least joining us about halfway through. Um, but I want to give special thanks to Megan Hernandez, our administrative associate, for running the slides for us. Thank you so much, Megan. It's a big help. She's also sharing those links into chat. Um, and OK, I'm just looking into chat to see some of these introductions. And Lisa, I have never heard of a lab hua hua, but that's fantastic, and I'm going to look it up. Good to see so many of you here representing so much of Texas and beyond. I really appreciate it. All righty. Our other hosts today are the fabulous Vireo Steering Committee, which organizes all Vireo user group activities, including this annual meeting. Um, they provide essential guidance. It also solicits ideas from the users group about how to improve Vireo, documents the ideas, and organizes them. Uh, so Frank and I serve as part of that steering committee, um, but the group is led by two co-chairs, one from a TDL member institution and one who is using Vireo outside of the TDL consortium in the open source community. So one of our current co-chairs is uh, Billy Peterson Lugo from Baylor University. Um, so let's see. And I can't wave because my camera doesn't work. <laughs> okay, that was a voice wave for us, Billy. Thank you. <laughs> the other co-chair is Emily Wuchner from the University of Illinois. Emily, want to say hi? There you are waving. Hello, Emily. Thank you. <clears throat> Another... Um, Vireo User Group Steering Committee member joining us today is uh, John Crosno from UT Southwest Medical Center. John, do you want to give us a wave? Excellent. Thank you. Um, you might notice from the slide, too, that Christopher Starcher is uh, serving us in two very important ways. <laughs> so in addition to being the uh, product manager for TDL, he's also the product owner for Vireo. The person in this role in the steering committee serves as the liaison between the Vireo user group and the development team. So they receive the prioritized lists of software improvements from the steering committee and then negotiate the adoption um, and priorities by the developers. This product owner also has the final say on whether or not the system functionality sufficiently addresses all requested needs after the developers have done their work. So um, Christopher, would you like to give a wave as well again? 
We're double duty. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump into um, some polls. And once we get through these, we'll um, move on to uh, Christopher sharing quite a bit with us. So I'm going to go ahead and launch these. Um, and we won't stay too long on them. I'm going to launch this first question. We have four total. So the first question is, what version of Vireo are you using? And these all come up on the same um, poll and quiz frame. So you'll see them all at once, and you're welcome to go through and answer them um, all at one time. This is a little bit different from how the Zoom quizzes used to work. So if you're familiar with doing them in the past. So I'm seeing a lot of you had finished that first question. The second one is, what best describes your plans to upgrade to Vireo 4? Um, so yes, but you need more time. Yes, I'm doing it right away. I already did. We're not going to do it <laughs> or something else. Um, and if you indicate something else, I might ask you to tell us what that is in chat. <clears throat> the third question is, this is going to be helpful to us. <clears throat> We're going to ask this every year probably, is what type of single sign-on or SSO do you use? So um, typically Shibboleth would be the most common answer to that. Um, this is a fill in the blank. Um, so just let us know. And I'll let you know what those were later in the meeting once I can look at the results. Lily, lucky. <laughs> Billy, you're not muted. Oh, I'm not muted. I'm sorry. I That's was okay. sure I... I assume those were your animals. <laughs> All of us have been there. <clears throat> And the last question is just where do you publish your ETDs? Um, for a lot of you who are TDL members, that's going to be DSpace. Um, that's probably ProQuest for some of you as well. And there could be some other options um, that you let us know too. And I'll just wait a few more seconds here before closing this out because I'm seeing that we're having pretty good percentages. Um, and just quickly while you're finishing up, um, I'm seeing that most people uh, we've got 70% of y'all on four. I'm guessing because that's a lot of you are TDL members and we've moved most TDL members to four um, by now. We've also got at least a few of you still on Vario 2 um, and we've got a handful on three as well. And it looks like <clears throat> a lot of you have already upgraded. Um, some of you need a little more time. Some of you have intention too soon. Um, really curious what that other is. If you can drop that into the chat, I'd really like to know, um, but you don't have to. No, um, no pressure. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end the polls. And I'm just going to quickly look at the single sign-on responses. Most of you are on Shibboleth. So most of your answers were Shibboleth. Um, and I've got one uh, Azure for new sites. And then where you publish your ETDs, um, some of you in your own repository, definitely ProQuest and DSpace showing up a lot. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything, uh, anything other than those two. So thank you, y'all. It's nice to know who's here with us. We appreciate taking the time to answer some of those polls. So next up, um, we're going to hear, like I promised, from Christopher Starcher um, about his work as Vireo product manager and product owner. And he'll talk about his main priorities, um, what he's done so far in his new role, and also his plans for the new year. So Christopher, I'm going to go ahead and hang it, hand it over to you. Okay, thank you, Courtney. Um, I am Christopher Starcher, and I actually wear three hats uh, with Vireo. I'm, as Courtney mentioned, I am the product manager, uh, 
a, a role that I have with TDL. I'm also the product owner, a role that I have with the open source project. Um, and I'm also a developer uh, for the uh, project as well. Um, so when I started the role as product manager, we outlined several priorities um, for this role. Um, they're pretty much in order here. Um, there was an immense backlog that had built up over many years of issues in GitHub. And no one had ever had the time or really been able to go back and, and go through that backlog to see if all of the issues had been addressed, um, if um, we needed to resurface some of those issues. Um, so I went back through and uh, went through all of the issues, updated the issues, closed issues out that uh, had not been closed out, even though they had been uh, implemented or, or, um, or became irrelevant for some reason. Um, and so our backlog is not, it's still not small. Um, there are still some issues on there. So a lot of uh, them are things that may be uh, very minor issues or um, issues that um, we'd love to see if we get the time to either fix them or implement them, but um, they will stay on the backlog uh, just in case we, we can get to them. But many of them we very likely will not uh, uh, get to. Um, but um, anyway, this, all of those have been updated. Uh, so we kind of know now um, what things are working, have been addressed, and what things are not. Um, so that the, the reason for doing that is that helps us in sprint planning. Um, that helps us to know the development team, to know what we've done, what is still left to do, and then we can prioritize those issues uh, for, for future sprints. Uh, another priority that um, we identified was to review documentation. Um, over the years, the uh, documentation has been cobbled together, in particular, the technical documentation had been cobbled together um, during different sprints as people had time to kind of write things up and uh, uh, document the, um, the, the technical aspects of the system deployments and so forth. Um, I'm still working on that as we'll see here in just a minute. I'll, I'll uh, go into the work so far and then future work. Um, but we identified the technical documentation and the user doc documentation as places that really needed some attention. Um, the next one is removing barriers to external participation. Um, we noticed over the years that there were some um, identifiable barriers that kept people from participating in the the project either technical barriers for so for developers that we might would want to onboard to uh, participate in the project um, or um, just just people trying to help other people um, or trying to submit documentation for the project so we we know that we needed to identify these things and to correct them as, as best we can. Um, then there's the open source uh, funding strategies. This is, this is not an uncomplicated issue. Um, this, this could include a lot of different um, avenues for funding, either be it um, through TDL hosting uh, sites um, or different open source projects have have tried different types of funding um, 
uh, funding strategies to help with this. And so we're, we're looking at those things. We, we, we identified that we really need to look at those things for Vireo to be a long-term sustainable open source project. And then lastly, we knew that we needed to look ahead. So yes, we're just now over the past year, we've really just been rolling out Vario 4. TDL has been rolling out Vario 4. Um, other institutions have been rolling it out that host their own. Um, but we can't just stop here. We, we need to really look forward and, and devise a roadmap for what does Vireo look like in the future? Um, as you know, software changes, um, needs change. And so we knew that we needed to start really looking at this and this had not been um, done in, in quite a while, really since, since the move from, the planning for the move from three to four. So, what work have we done so far? Um, I have gone back through, as I mentioned earlier, reviewed all the issues in the backlog um, and updated all of them, closed, closed a lot of them out that, that never got closed out. Um, one of the things, and I'll talk about this later in, in a different section of this presentation, is that um, in doing so, uh, we also created some templates so there are three different templates. If you go into the issues section of the GitHub repository, you will see that there's a, there are templates that you can use to request features. You can use them to report bugs, and you can even use them to report any um, security vulnerabilities that you might come across that we have not um, seen ourselves on the, the development team. Um, so uh, this has been, I think, a good step forward uh, as well. And this one kind of fits as well under the next section of removing barriers to external participation. Um, I think maybe there was a lot of hesitancy from people uh, who didn't really, didn't feel comfortable uh, creating a GitHub issue. They felt either they wouldn't put in the right information or wouldn't put in enough information, those kinds of things. So, so uh, we're hoping that this will help to remove some of those barriers uh, of participation. Um, moving on to that specifically, the barriers for participation, um, reviewing technical documentation, something um, that has been started, I'm continuing to work on. Um, as I reviewed the technical documentation, uh, it was clear that those of us that were already involved in the project kind of knew what we were doing and 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 what needed to be done to um, either work on Vireo or deploy Vireo. However, it was very clear that other people that are outside of the project um, we're having some trouble um, with that documentation. It wasn't really accessible to them. So uh, I'm currently working on that and we'll continue to work on that. Um, another thing that we've done is to adopt best practices for um, an open for open source development or some of them really uh, for any kind of development. And so we've been um, implementing some of those changes. Uh, for the, the development team so that um, we can standardize the project a little bit more, uh, maybe make it more accessible to onboard uh, new uh, developers uh, in the future. Um, so working on the technical uh, documentation, and then we've also started working um, and thinking about the funding models and um, what what we can do to um, help support the sustainability of the Vario project. And we will continue to work on that uh, in the future. Um, moving on to future work, um, 
a lot of these are repetitive and the reason is is because they've started at a point and and they will continue they they've they none of them are really all done or ever done even the backlog work you know issues continue to come up and so we add them in and they have to be reviewed and so all of that work continues and will will continue into the future um but specifically um reviewing documentation will um will continue in the future removing those barriers we're we're always trying to do that the this project and I'll I'll um I'll harp on this a little bit um later on and partici external participation participation by the members by the users of Vireo is so important to any open source project and so we will continue to work on that and and find ways to um to bring down those barriers and to um to get more people involved in in this project um, we will continue to work on funding strategies um and then it, like i mentioned earlier um, the long-term software development roadmap we will by necessity uh have to work on that and um, um i'll talk about that a little bit more later um, so the next slide, development up status and updates. Um, so uh, although the work on Vireo has slowed over the past year, uh, it has not stopped. We have released four versions uh, of Vireo in that time. Um, those releases include um, many bug fixes, uh, uh, actually the, the majority of, of the um, commits to those are, are bug fixes. They have addressed some additional functionality that we've been able to um, to add in. We've we've listened as people have been um, deploying Vireo and and have seen it for the first time and and maybe there was a feature that wasn't that was in three that they really used and and it never made it into four or just something they would like to see or or even little things such as. Um, uh, one of the things I can bring off the top of my head is um, uh, just adding the ability to have links on the front page, for instance, if your system's down, uh, you know, little things like that, um, some of them not so little, that we've been able to add in. Um, and um, we've added some significant performance enhancements. So if you tried to deploy Vireo a year or two ago, um, you will notice uh, when you deploy now that the system runs so much better, uh, so much faster. Um, and so we made a lot of, of progress there. Um, now that we're on version 4.2.9, this is the latest version. We actually just released it a few days ago. I think it was Friday, even Thursday or Friday of last week. Um, we're planning to freeze development until the spring of 2025. The reason we're doing this is uh, that will give TDL the chance to update all of their systems to uh, a single uh, version instead of having a different versions spread across different institutions. So that'll give them time to really upgrade everyone and have a consistent version across all of their deployments. Um, we are aware that there are still some lingering issues uh, that have been reported um, from people starting, more people starting to use the system. So we are documenting all of those. Um, we are um, putting issues into GitHub so that we, we can track those issues as they come up. Uh, so we are planning, uh, we're in the process of planning a community sprint for the spring of 2025. I did mention that we had the freeze until the spring of 2025, and that's because we're planning a sprint that um, we would love for all of the community who uh, is able to participate in um, we, like I said, we are currently, um, um, planning that. So if you would like to be a part of that, uh, and I'll mention this again later on, 
if you'd like to be a part of that, please reach out to me. We'd love to uh, get you uh, on board to um, to work on that. And and we will we will be addressing as many of those issues that have come up and any backlog issues that we can, as many as we can in that time. Of course, that's all dependent on the um, number of contributors that we have at, and and their ability to um, contribute. And so we won't really know until we get closer to the sprint what that sprint will look like. We do have priorities. Um, and of course, the higher priority things we'll, we'll um, get to first and we'll get to as many of the others as we can. Hey, Christopher, um, can I ask you something that came up yes. in the chat? Um, we have a question, and I think this is a great question. So thank you, Mary. Um, Mary wants to know, in the Vireo context, what is considered a sprint? Oh, OK, sure. Um, so a sprint is a um, specific amount of time set aside. We, we typically do either two or three week sprints. Um, where we we plan uh, we'll have a certain number of developers that um, will be able to contribute a certain number of hours. We um, don't really necessarily do it by hours, but we we take each of the issues and we give them um, points based on a point system. And that's how we determine how much work we can get done in that. A particular amount of time. So um, we will be uh, we'll be uh, planning that time. We don't even really have the dates yet. We're still talking the the current group of developers that we have now. We're discussing when everyone can kind of get together. It helps uh, if we can do it in a time where we can all work together during a specific period of time. Um, we can work a little more efficiently that way. So that's what a sprint is. So, um, um, I guess that's all I have to say about the development status and updates. Um, at this point, um, I'm going to turn, so good question. Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm going to turn over to, um, Frank, uh, if he has anything that he needs to say about, um, any updates, uh, for, from TDL side. I'll just reiterate what uh, Christopher was saying that, uh, yes, uh, a lot of uh, bug reports are what drive the development. Uh, plus, we did add some new features, which were helpful. Uh, and, it, you know, uh, I'm uh, watching the tickets and I'm fixing things uh, as they go. Sometimes it's a, a Vario issue and I'll put it in GitHub for when we have our next sprint. Uh, there's also other things. There's three components that, that I deal with. There's Vario software itself. There's the migration software, uh, which takes a Vario 3 and moves it to Vario 4. Or if there's schema changes and updates to Vario 4, I'll have to run uh, several scripts. So there's the migration scripts. Sometimes a bug uh, comes from the migration process. So I'll, I'll, that's something I can I can fix pretty quickly. Uh, but once you're migrated, generally, uh, you're, you're only dealing with GitHub issues. There's also scripts that actually do the deployment. So at TDL, we've deployed 10 sites. We moved 10 sites, migrated to Vario 4. Uh, there's three of them are on Vario 3, and they will soon be moving there. So uh, yes, uh, it's it's a lot of bug fixes, and 4.2.9 looks really nice. Um, there, there's so much that got fixed in this the recent uh, three or four issues. Thanks, right, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Um, so I, I think I'm done with this part, Courtney, and I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, thank you, Christopher, and thanks, Frank. Um, and I just want to kind of emphasize something that Frank alluded to, that um, so many of the issues that we've been finding and being able to fix are because of our TDL members, um, who are some of the first to use the more cutting edge versions of Vireo. And we just really appreciate the help and feedback to refine the system and it makes it better for everybody. So those of you who are here today, um, who we support, we just really appreciate you and appreciate all the work you've put in to help us refine the system. Um, 
We do have a break in the schedule, but I want to allow for some questions first because we did just go through a lot. <laughs> um, so Christopher gave you a lot of information and Frank updated you on what we're doing at TDL. So um, do any of you have questions you can feel free to unmute and just ask, or you can drop something into chat. I can ask a question. Alexa, thank you. Hi. Um, so I am new to Vireo. Um, I recently started at Texas State University and my former institution did not use Vireo. Um, so my question is just kind of a, uh, like a use process. Um, Chris, you mentioned some people don't always feel comfortable um, creating a um, new issue in the github platform um do you find that it's like first they create a ticket in the tdl help desk ticket system and then you say that's an issue can you please put it in github or how does that process work if as vireo users we come across something if we don't know this might be just a, a user error on on our end or um if we should create that that um i guess put it so that everyone can see it, not just TDL folks. That makes sure. sense. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so if you are a member of TDL and uh, you report uh, a problem through their ticketing system, if it is determined that that is an actual bug in the system or something that we need to address on the development side, uh, Frank has been really good about taking those issues and putting them in GitHub. Um, we sometimes have had, we've had some discussions about them as well um, with the uh, TDL support staff. Um, so those will end up in GitHub if you do report them that way. If you are outside of TDL, um, GitHub is really a great way for you to uh, contribute and to um, add any issues that you come across. Even if it's an issue that is not actually turns out to be a bug with the system. Um, it's okay. We're, we're, we're not judgmental here. We, we don't, um, we're not, we're not going to come at you with uh, pitchforks because you, you added an issue to GitHub and, and it really wasn't a system issue. It was just the way maybe you were looking at the system and how you were using it. And, and there's another way around it. We, we love those things. It's, you know, that's, that's how, it's really one of the ways we can communicate with our users, especially those who are outside of Texas or outside of TDL. Um, and um, you never know. It really could be something with the system that we've not ever on the development side, we've not ever used the system in the particular way that you're using it. And so we've never run across that error before. There, the system is such a large system uh, there's so many pieces to it. There's so much functionality in it that it's really impossible for the development team to come across every particular use of the system and find every specific bug. It, it really is. And so we really, for us to be good, and I, I, I want to make this point, for us to be doing the best that we can as developers, it is it is important that we have the users reporting back to us anything that they see that is not what they expected because we really can't do our job as well if we don't have that feedback. So thank you. Does that answer your question? Great. Thank you for I'll asking just, that. Great question. I'll, I'll, I'll just add that uh, the, the tickets that we get, that I get. Uh, most often, the the problem with Vireo is uh, a data problem, and I can fix the data problem right away. Uh, though, for those issues that uh, I'm able to determine are a Vireo bug, uh, I will go ahead and uh, create the uh, GitHub issue, and I will uh, put the GitHub issue in the ticket that uh, you you sent in, and I will put that ticket on hold. So. Someday when that Vireo uh, issue gets fixed, I, I will know what ticket it came from that I can report back to you. 
uh, that that's been fixed or, or however it was resolved. Definitely not a small question, Alexa. Thank you so much. That was a great question. Um, that's It's so nice to have folks who are new to the system because we do get questions like that that we take for granted. Um, any other questions from anyone here? Again, feel free to unmute and ask or... Courtney, I have a question. Um, and maybe Chris mentioned it and I may have missed it. Um, when is the most current version 2.4.9 going to be released to the TDL libraries? I'm, I'm going to let Frank um, answer that one. Uh, so uh, I've upgraded a few to 4.2.8, uh, but now at 4.2.9, I'm going to revisit those sites. That, that should be quick. Uh, there is one actual uh, migration site that's where they're testing to, to um, their migration uh, that's on 4.2.9 right now uh, but over the the, the next uh, couple months uh, we'll be rolling out to everybody 4.2.9 thanks other questions Okay, well, we have a lot more content after the break, so I'm sure you'll have more <laughs> questions after we dig in a little deeper. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give us uh, just a five minute break. Um, so everybody, if you can be back at 10 till the hour, um, go get yourself some more water, coffee, tea, whatever you need to do. Um, pet some of your fluffy buddies <laughs> and we'll see you back here soon. Hello, everybody. We're back. So, Megan, if you'll go to the next slide for me, we have a fun announcement. Um, so I want to share with you all today that TDL's Outreach and Member Engagement Coordinator, Kiara Hunt, has redesigned the Vireo logo and has also made it available for your use in any of your local documentation. Um, we've added uh, all the different variations and colors to the TDL wiki, and so you can download them from there. Um, Megan, thank you so much. She just shared that link in chat. I know Kiara is going to join us, but she was in another meeting and I don't think she's been able to get here yet. So when she joins, I'm going to go ahead and probably pause us wherever we are, Christopher, and just let her introduce herself because um, we're excited about it. Um, Kiara basically presented the new logo, a few options to the steering committee, and the steering committee had some opportunity to give feedback, and that's how we ended up with these um, updated logos. So thanks to Kiara, and we'll thank her again when she, when she joins us um, in the meeting later today. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Christopher, and Christopher, it's all you. Okay, thank you. The next section I'm going to go into is um, what we're calling a call for feedback. And um, before I go into that, uh, I wanted to share a slide that was presented at the DSpace North American User Group meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Tim Donahue and uh, Holger Lenz of Lyricis of the DSpace project uh, we're doing a presentation about community and um, the importance of community in an open source project. And one of the things that really struck me, I think, and this kind of goes back to um, the barriers that we talked about before, and they made the point that, that contributions just need to be good enough that they don't need to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. And so 
as long as we're making progress, we're we're working toward that perfection that we're trying to get to, right? So the the objective here is really progress, and we're making progress. We're better off than we were before that contribution. So as long as we're making progress, that's what's important. And I just, I, I don't know, that really just hit home to me as I've been thinking about barriers uh, for participation from, from the group. Um, so I just I just lifted this slide from their presentation. This is the, the exact slide that they presented um, because I thought it was so good and um, it illustrated the point so well. Um, and really the point I'm, I'll be making here in this call for feedback is that is that building and maintaining a healthy open source project, it's an ongoing and iterative process. And it involves the entire community. That's how you have a strong open source project is to have a strong open source community. So the call for feedback, there are many ways that people can participate. I, I think a lot of times people think that they can't participate to an open source project because they don't have the technical skills required to be on the development team or to deploy the the um, the software. And, and that's really not true. There are lots of ways that really anybody in this meeting and anybody using Vireo can participate and help the project. Um, we've mentioned before GitHub issues. This is a direct way that you can um, dialogue with the development team on either feature requests, on bugs, things that, that you've run across that, that no one else has seen yet because nobody's used the system the way you have. Um, all of these things um, can, be, can be put into GitHub. They don't have to be perfect issues. We have given you templates that you can use that give you an idea of how to format it, uh, the issue, how to format the issue so that it's easy for the the developers once they are able to work on that issue to digest it and to understand it, um, so that um, that they have the the required information really that they need to address the issue. So. Uh, Please feel free to go in to GitHub, look at those, um, look at those templates, and uh, use them. That, that's what they're there for. They're not just there for for us, for the development team to use, even though we do use them. Um, they're there for the entire community to use. Um, all you need to do that is you need to have a just. If you don't have a GitHub account, sign up have a GitHub account, and uh, you can go in and create issues. Um, the uh, an Another way, if you don't have specific issues that you need to uh, address, is uh, through documentation. So there is, we have a lot of holes in, in the documentation. As I mentioned earlier, this was one of the things that we identified as a need um, to be addressed in the project. We have a lot of holes in that. I, as a developer, don't use the system exactly the way that um, the, a graduate school or a library may use the system. I may not go through all of the parts of the system in the same way. So there's a truly a need for user documentation um, to for the for the community to add to that so um you can either uh, I, I see that uh, courtney just added the documentation link here you can do that through comments uh, you can make comments so if you get to a part of the documentation and you see oh it's missing this feel free to add comments um in in the on the site so that we can update the documentation as well, if you see maybe that a section of the documentation is missing for a particular section and, and a particular um, uh, functionality of the system, you are welcome 
to take screenshots. If, if you'll look at the documentation here and, and just kind of see how, how we've been formatting it, we would encourage you to go through. You can create your own document where you can document things and share that back to the community. You can send it to me. You can really, you could send it to anyone um, on the um, user group steering committee. And we would love to have that. And we'll, we'll um, if, if it's not perfect, that's fine. We'll vet it. We'll go through it. We'll make sure that um, it's, um, it has all the information that's needed and uh, we'll put it into the, uh, the documentation. So please feel free to, um, to contribute in that way. Um, another way you can contribute is on the listserv. If you are not a member of the listserv, uh, I highly encourage you to join. This is, this is actually a very, we have a very um, active listserv and um, the community has been wonderful at responding to people who've had issues uh, or, or have just had questions about, you know, how do I use this functionality in the system? Or even a question of, I'm trying to do this. Can I do this in Vireo? Or I'm trying to do this and I know I can do this in Vireo, but I'm not exactly sure how to do it. Um, oftentimes you'll get responses that day um, from the uh, user uh, the user group. And so um, this is a really important piece of the community puzzle. And I, I certainly want to thank everyone um, who has uh, responded on the listserv and has helped the community. That is, it may not seem like a real important piece, but it really is. It's a really important piece here. Um, so thank you for everyone who's done that and please be, be active. That that's a great way to be active in the community. Um, we do have a couple of Slack channels. Uh, they are more specific. They're not just for questions about how to use the system or things like that. Um, those are, those are better in, in the listserv. You'll, you'll have a wider community of people that are, use the system that can help answer your questions for that. Um, in the Slack channel, we, we, we do have two channels on Slack. Um, the community channel is, was created mostly for people at your institution that may be deploying Vireo locally at your institution, and they may have a question about, okay, how do I, uh, more, more technical questions about how do I do this, or I'm running into this error, um, what do I need to do? So things like that, if you have people at your institution and you want to deploy Vireo and they need some technical help, please reach out to me. Um, we can get them added to the Slack channel and um, they can ask those questions that are will be better answered there as opposed to being answered on, on the listserv. Um, we also have a development channel. Uh, that's for the actual group that um, are the developers. So if you have someone at your institution that would be willing to, uh, to give some of their time to this project, we would love to get them on board. Um, please feel free to reach out to me and um, we can get them on the Slack channel. All of the current developers that work um, and even some past um, developers that have some historical knowledge um, are on that channel and um, we can get them going, uh, help them with any technical issues that they're having trying to uh, get up, get their, uh, their um, um, development um, uh, environment set up for, uh, for development on Vireo. So please, if you have anybody, please reach out to me. Uh, we would love to have them uh, come on board. Um, and um, we, we, so the, the, the last issue that, that kind of ties into the last issue is the spring sprint. If you do have developers that are willing and uh, are able to come on board. We are having a spring sprint. Um, we would love to um, get them involved. Now really is a great time, even though, yes, we're looking into the spring for doing a sprint. Now is a great time for them to get involved. 
um, to kind of get to a place where we can get them up to speed so that they can be effective um, during that uh, spring sprint. So please reach out to me and um, we will be glad to, to get them going. Um, the next slide uh, is uh, we're going to share a survey link in the chat. And um, this survey does have some questions that um, we've asked already um, in the Zoom meeting. Uh, the reason for asking them again here is because it um, aggregates all of those and it, it helps us know, um, it, it will ask some questions about you personally and about um, uh, your, uh, personally as far as your role at your institution. Um, and about your institution. And so we can kind of link those answers and get a better idea of um, who's using Vireo and how you're using it. It helps us for planning. So if you would please um, fill out the survey, it really does give us some, some value. It's not very long, but it does give us some really valuable information as we, um, uh, plan sprints, plan development. And uh, in that survey, you can also comment about anything. If you have um, a feature request that you would like to um, um, put on our list, if um, you have any questions or any comments about the community in general, or um, if you have any ideas about how to make um, the community um, better, we would love to hear those ideas. Uh, we'd love to hear any comments that you have about um, about Vireo. So please take some time to um, to fill that out, and um, we'd really appreciate that. And I guess that's really um, all that I have to uh, to say. If if you don't want to do the the um, the survey right now, you can always do it later uh in the day or if you don't have time but anyway i'll hand it back over to courtney i do have one question for you christopher will you share that survey out um, via the listserv as well so that for folks who couldn't come today i will yes after this meeting i will share that on the listserv awesome um so uh we left plenty of time we always schedule this with extra padding so we have time for lots of your questions comments um, we want to hear from you if you're using uh, four and you like a lot of things about it and you want to share those things or if there are challenges you're experiencing. Um, you have access right now to um, all of the Vireo leadership. So please use this opportunity if you have questions or comments. Um, I'm going to leave this discussion open. So again, feel free to unmute and talk to us or drop your questions uh, or comments into the chat here and we'll address them. Any developers here excited to participate? Uh, you mean in the spring sprint? That would be fantastic. Hi, Seth. Hi. Um, uh, I am interested in, in trying to get my team involved in that. Um, okay. I need to talk to my direct supervisor and um, see what we can do, but I will, I would like to, to reach out about that. Okay. That's great, uh, Seth. Yeah, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I don't think I, did I, I don't think my email address is on uh, any of the, here, I'll put it in the chat. Um, I don't think it's on any of the slides, but there's my email address. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. And um, uh, contributions don't just have to be during the sprint. If you run across a bug, something that you find 
um, you um, feel free to uh, create a pull request and uh, we will review it outside of the sprint. The sprint just kind of helps us prioritize issues and and um, really focus on some s specific things and work together at that specific point in time. But we're open to contributions all of the time. Um, okay. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be, especially if we if we come out with dates and, and you can't participate during those dates, it's fine. If you've got some work that you want to do, um, I will be happy to um, work with you or, or anyone um, to, um, to get that done outside of Sprint. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm, we're, Working on Vireo 4 at UIEC right now, um, and by we, I mean me, <laughs> um, but uh, we had done some like uh, customizations to Vireo 2 for a few different things, and we're trying to figure out like, you know, what what of these do we actually still need, and is there a way we could do it? And that would be something we can contribute back if other institutions need it somehow. Um, so, yeah, a lot of questions. Yeah, no, that's great. And uh, just to give you a, a recent example, um, uh, Texas A&M University, um, uh, our 4.2.8 release um, was released with um, some added functionality that we had not planned particularly to have in Vireo, but it helped with an issue that they were they had at their institution, and it's possible that it could have it could be um, useful to other institutions. So we pulled it in straight into the um, the TDL repository. Uh, we were happy to have that contribution, even though it won't affect many institutions, but there still was the possibility that another institution would have the same issue that they had. So we were happy to um, to put the that um, that contribution into the uh, main repository. Awesome. yeah, that's that's excellent. Thank you, Seth. Anyone else questions or comments about anything Vireo? Okay, I think I've waited to the awkward period for long enough. Um, <laughs> I always like to just drag it out a little extra so everyone has time to think and go over their notes and think if they have any other questions. But thankfully, Christopher has given you many ways to engage with us. Um, and so if anything pops into your mind later, just um, bring it um, and we'll do our best to address whatever it is. Um, I want to thank you all so much for coming. We're going to share this recording. We're going to share the slides as well. And those will also be preserved in our uh, TDL institutional repository. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm Seth. sorry, Courtney. Uh, no real quick before um, before we sign off, uh, Emily Wokener just uh, messaged me. Um, and uh, you know, we've got a lot of... Um, a lot of buzz around campus about the Title II ADA uh, stuff that um, I'm sure you all are probably thinking about some as well. Um, is there uh, uh, what <laughs> what are the accessibility? Um, are there any concerns around accessibility for for Vireo and and uh, is that part of any planned development or anything like that.
I'll start and then Christopher, I'll hand to you. Um, because yeah, Seth, this has definitely recently come up, um, especially in the context of, of TDL, of course, because as you know, we host so many different uh, systems and infrastructure. Um, we're actually planning a conversation with our governing board coming up in the next month, so at the beginning of November, to discuss our next steps um, for all of this kind of for all of TDL software uh, and service ecosystem. Um, in terms of Vireo 4, we've already done quite a lot of accessibility work. Um, Christopher, do you want to talk about a little bit about that and, and what's planned? and how you're handling sure. it? Sure. So we we had um, an accessibility audit done by an outside entity, um, I guess, was that a couple of years ago? And um, we uh, did a good deal of work, um, not not so much over this past year, but um, the, the prior year and uh, on, on accessibility. And uh, we got a lot done. Um, the system is not 100% accessible. Um, we had to focus with the resources that we had. We had to focus, and our focus was uh, particularly on the student side of the system. We wanted to focus on those issues that affected the greater number of people. So unfortunately, we were not able to do much on the admin side. Um, but we did accomplish quite a bit on the student side, the submission side of the system. Um, there are still some things, there are still some issues. If you go in, we actually have an accessibility tag uh, in our GitHub, so you can search by accessibility. And there are still some open issues that we have. Um, we had, here again, we had to prioritize and we got through as many of them as we could. Um, if we can get through more in the future, we would love to. Um, and even if that even if that filtered over into um, addressing um, some of the accessibility concerns on the uh, admin side as well, um, it's um, really it's just a matter of of um, resources and and if if we have enough time and developers to to um, uh, commit to it, um, we're always happy to work on accessibility issues. Or take contributions for accessibility issues too. If that's something that, that uh, Seth, you and your team, um, you know, uh, would like to address, we, we, I would be more than happy to work with y'all on things like that. So it is, is very important for us. Um, we, um, um, we just, like I said, we had we had to prioritize, and so yeah. um, we had to make some some decisions uh, about what we were able to do and 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 uh, what we needed to do. Um, does that answer your question? Does that help? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I think starting with the the student side makes a lot of sense, um, and. Uh, yeah, we may be able to provide some more, some further help or guidance or something, but we're, we are also, you know, working on it, but, um, yeah. uh, supposed to be compliant with the ADA requirements by April of 2026. So we're, right. um, we are rapidly <laughs> ramping up, uh, our tool set to do that, um, uh so but we we've got we've also you know been working for the last several years on um making systems accessible and and building our uh skills around that so um hopefully we can help if there's more that's needed okay yeah and and I'll, like I will you add all are to doing uh, it as well yeah, to that <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Sounds like you all are doing it as well. So that's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, I, I will add as well. Um, uh, at the time when Vireo 4 was being planned, um, uh, it, it although I wasn't in on those discussions, it doesn't seem like 
um, accessibility was really on the radar at that time. But what I can tell you is that as we do discuss, as I mentioned before, we have a development roadmap that we want to um, produce and um, uh, accessibility will have a big role in, in future discussions for future development of um, a Vireo. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thanks, Seth. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, anyone who is interested in details about the accessibility audit and the kind of initial pass that we did to address as many of its issues as possible um, can refer to the prior Vireo user group steering or the virtual meeting last year, the annual meeting. Um, there's a video of that available in the Texas Digital Library's institutional repository online. Okay, did that spark anyone else's other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any uh, unmuting or typing. Um, so again, we'll provide, um, we'll send a message with the survey to the uh, listserv. We'll also share the slides and this video, um, once we've put it in the Texas Digital Library's Institutional Repository, thank you all so much for coming today. We really appreciate it, and thank you for being a part of the community. Um, so, and thanks to everybody today, our steering committee in particular, and our lead developer, Frank Smutniak. Thank you so much for being here and helping out. Um, take care, everybody, and we'll see you again when we do this uh, next year or on the listserv or in GitHub. Bye, everybody.